Hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel Garcia. I'm a poet, artist, and activist um, working in Salinas and Watsonville communities. Um, I've been interested in creative outlets all my life, um, but art school was never really accessible for me um, financially or even just the area that I was in at the time. And so when I got older and I figured out that art and music um, and community were really big passions of mine, I wanted to make that a huge part of my life and I wasn't quite sure how to go about it. And so what really helped me is I networked and found other people in my community who were passionate about the same things um, or even just within the arts community like uh, actors and filmmakers, um, singers, songwriters, all these different folks who really kind of opened my eyes and inspired me to continue my work and to continue to find my voice and style in my art. Um, and with that led me to organizations, to community centers, gallery spaces, um, event centers, where we could actually put on shows, um, exhibits, and really reach a larger audience. So I didn't get the formal training or the, the traditional training that you might think um, being a professional artist, but through a lot of experience um, with, with my friends and family and community members, we were able to create something much larger and more significant than if we had been working individually on our own projects. Um, so that really, like I said, inspired me and made me want to learn more, do more, and um, explore different types of, of creative pursuits. So um, in addition to my spoken word poetry, um, I started to actually do hip hop and um, rap and was able to um, kind of be part of a huge network of people in um, the Central Coast area who are uh, doing all different types of mixtapes and um, performances throughout the community, all with a very positive message um, and one of, of really being proud of who we are and um, really wanting to share that with the next generation of young folks coming up who might not know that, that um, there's, there is hip hop with a positive message out there. So that became um, a really big part of my life. Um, I still rap to this day, I still perform to this day, and um, I'm really excited to see how many people are, are still um, really devout hip hop fans and, um, and really in love with the craft. Um, because that's something that just, again, fuels that movement. Um, with my art, I've always really loved drawing and painting, but um, as, over time that really increased to become um, something that would engage more with the public rather than, like I said, just being at home painting by myself, right? So um, I started doing murals, and murals are a really powerful way to not only get your message out into the community, but also to really um, be able to do something collaborative. Because like I had said, like you might have an idea, I might have an idea, but when we come together, it's going to make something even greater. So when we could get, you know, multiple people involved, I think the last um, mural, community mural project we did, we had about 100 people out there painting in one day. Um, and covered an entire fence in an alleyway that, you know, really wasn't um, a space that people like to be in or, or um, you know, was really that attractive. But when we had done all these murals, like suddenly it created a really beautiful um, space for, for people when they were on their way through that neighborhood. So I really like to do public art and especially collaborative public art um, because of that purpose to really make sure that what we're doing is affecting as many people as possible and in the most positive way possible. Um, so again, like we use, we use really um, powerful, positive messaging. Um, a lot of our murals are cultural murals um, to celebrate you know, where we've come from and, and the cultural practices we continue today, um, preserving those. I think whenever we can bring together people of all different types of art and all different types of creative expression, we're going to create something more powerful and more beautiful than we could ever imagine. Um, so I really, because I'm both an artist, um, a visual artist and a hip hop artist, I really like to have art exhibits at hip hop shows. I think that 
doing that um, engages people in in more ways and can reach someone that maybe maybe they're not so into the music, maybe they're not so into the art, but um, they're in a space with other people who who appreciate um, one or the other or both. Um, so the more people we can bring together around um, creativity, around positivity, the better. Um, when I first started out performing um, as a poet and as a hip hop artist, uh, I was in college, I was going to UCSC, and there was a group there that um, called Kinetic Poetics Project, and they're still running there today. They do um, weekly uh, slams and open mics, and I was terrified of performing. Um, so terrified I would be shaking and I would bring my poem and it would just be like completely shaking terrified my heart racing and um, it really it was really difficult for me to share my words with people and to to speak publicly as comfortable as I seem now that would have never happened back then um, what changed for me was I kind of had to have like a little internal uh, agreement with myself for that first performance where instead of putting all this pressure and expectation that, oh, is everyone gonna like what I have to say? You know, is it gonna be, is it gonna be good enough? Um, I signed my name on the open mic list and didn't have anything prepared. <laughs> and um, so when it came time and they called my name, um, I had, just written down a few things in the time between signing up and them calling my name. And so my expectations of myself were extremely low. I you know, was able to just be like, oh, well, you just wrote it in 10 minutes, so it's going to be OK, right? I was still nervous, but I was able to go up there and, and say what I had to say. And the feedback was overwhelming. You know, like the whole audience you know, applauded. and. And people came up to me afterward and was like, oh, I really liked what you said. It really resonated with me. You know, I wish more people would speak about those issues. And so that really got me thinking, you know, like, if I'm feeling silenced, if I feel like people don't care what I have to say, there's got to be hundreds of other people that feel the same way. And if I take that initiative and I step out of my comfort zone and put my truth out there, then maybe that'll inspire other people to do the same. And maybe we'll be able to collaboratively create a world in which we all feel more comfortable being ourselves and expressing ourselves authentically, you know, without fear, without shame or guilt for judgment that we might face. Um, and so that moment, um, as simple as it was, that little 10 minute, um, you know, chicken scratch that I had written to perform, that moment completely changed the way that I thought about performing, the way that I thought about being seen and heard um, and I've really never looked back um, since then I've you know performed so many times for so many different groups of people from um, you know very like professional like buttoned up you know uh, thousands of people in the audience to you know in someone's living room with their family um, for just um, a night of, of you know drinks and and guitar playing and singing, right? So it's just about, for me, being my authentic self whenever I can, as much as I can, um, for the people around me, because I think that's only going to further everything for all of us. <laughs> My people are illegal, try to lock us up with lethal Weapons meant for dead, didn't direct them at the heads of the young boys and girls Who feel trapped inside the world where it's fighting for your future Or do just what you're told and they're told to succeed But not given what they need and they're told to survive But concrete don't secrete trees, can't grow a plant a seed How you even supposed to breathe? As my cases, cancer cases, but we catch cases But we took more money for prisons, farms and pharmacies Cause they spray out in these fields like the pigs out in these streets Where you can't afford a home and you're lucky if you eat even have healthy groceries more than once a week so you're feeling kind of weak and it's hella hard to sleep but you gotta keep on going because you won't accept defeat won't accept retreat gotta hustle it's a struggle and we struggle till we're free
native blood runs through our veins Yet the governments complain that the line that drew across the desert can't keep us contained Corporations keep them paid, lobbyists write rights away You heard both wings are from a bird And the church is like it's cage, and the church is like it's cage And the church is like a cage, cause they colonized our cultures Turned us into slaves, do this and behave Boards rape, mass murder, grave, what's to do assimilate And we still carry that pain, we internalize that hate It weighs on us every day, that's why North and South die But five will just drive away, and it's hard to hear the truth but it's much harder to say Cause they want to kill our leaders So that things will stay the same But I've never been the same And I always want to change them Like a catalyst for hope So that's my focus in my work um, Like I said, I really want to ensure That everything that I do is, is inclusive of our community And really inspiring that next generation So a lot of the work that I do Is also focus on youth And youth empowerment so um, I actually coordinate an after school program in Watsonville where we provide all different types of arts classes to kids in elementary and middle schools. But I also mentor um, a group of high school students and college kids who are focused on how do we make these outlets more accessible to people living in rural communities who might not have access to a studio space or um, be given permission to paint graffiti on a wall, right? So that has been my focus um, now, is how do we make these outlets, um, whether the technology is available, whether the, the supplies that we need, how do we make that accessible to people who wouldn't otherwise have access to it? So I started a nonprofit called The Creative Express. And The Creative Express is a mobile art and music studio. Um, and we're actually finishing the recording studio side of it right now and are working on some of the other uh, renovations that are needed in order to actually get it out into the communities to do block parties and workshops and um, really reach people um, because all of us have an important perspective, an important um, truth that we need to share. Um, and that in and of itself is healing. So. If we can make sure that more and more people have that accessibility to an outlet to express themselves and to heal, it's only going to help all of us. So like I said, that's been, that's been my focus. Um, I really hope that if you yourself are interested in the arts and want to explore any form, whether it's, whether it's visual art, whether it's performing arts or music or anything like that, um, go for it, really, because even if it's not something that you want to make your career, you, you don't want to be a professional artist, it's going to help you in all other areas of your life, um, emotionally, spiritually, physically, all of those things. An important thing for the work that I do as a program manager for Mariposa Arts um, of the Arts Council is that we need to go to where the youth are at regardless of whether they've you know, had um, their fine arts or music classes um, because a lot of times it's the first time that they've ever experienced using a paintbrush or um, recording a song or holding a guitar. And so I think that by us going into spaces where the youth already are, into the schools, um, into community centers, um, into churches, wherever the youth might be, is kind of meeting them where they're at and really making the instruments and resources accessible to them so that they can find out if this is something that they want to do more of. Um, and then if it is something they want to do more of, what are the outlets then, right? And so that's where the idea for the Creative Express came from is, you know, if, um, if a student really wants to be painting all the time or really wants to be playing guitar, you know, and they're not able to do that in the school setting because of, of the structure um, and, you know, class sizes and all these things, they're not getting those, those needs met. How can we provide that on a community level for our people? Um, so that's really been my focus and what I want to see more of, and I hope all of us do more of that. I've been creating for as long as I can remember, ever since I was a little kid. Um, and I never really thought of myself as an artist or um, as a lyricist or a poet or any of those things. I just always wanted to draw and always wanted to write. Um, my childhood was not easy uh, by any means, and I was isolated a lot. And so having those outlets, being able to just open a book, you know, have that blank notebook page, um, 
that wouldn't talk back. <laughs> it wouldn't judge me. It wouldn't, you know, um, have anything to say. It was really just, you know, really a journal, uh, a place where I could just pour out all my thoughts and feelings. Um, and so that's really how I got started. It wasn't because I was like, oh, I want to create art for the world, you know, like it was really about how do I just get all these feelings out? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like where do I go with all these feelings? And so um, I started um, drawing, I think maybe when I was about two or three. Um, and I started writing, I think around um, maybe around like 11 or something like that. Um, but I didn't really know that I was a poet or that I was an artist until my teachers and peers started to uh, kind of acknowledge it, right? And they, oh, that's really good. Or, you know, can you draw this for my girlfriend or my boyfriend or whatever, right? And um, so I kind of got started that way. And then I was really into music, always really into music. Um, and so lyricism and poetry for me was a way to um, articulate things that pictures couldn't, right? So I think I've always done both because on different days I want to express myself in different ways. Um, and it wasn't until very recently that I started to get into theater, um, and which is a, a whole nother ball game <laughs> for, for artists. Um, I really encourage you to experiment with theater because it's, it's really uh, powerful. It's full body, emotion, words, everything, like all together at once. Um, and, it's, and it's beautiful because theater is inherently collaborative. You have to work with the tech crew, you have to work with all the, um, the stage manager, the other you know, actors and actresses on stage, the, the designers, all of this, right? There's so much that goes into a production. Um, and similarly, like, you know, if you're working on um, a mural or a song, there's, there's so much that goes into it um, that can take uh, years, <laughs> really. So, so thank you for listening. Um, like I said, I really hope if you want to be creative or express yourself in those ways, I really encourage you to do so and share that with your friends and family. Um, share that with the community. If you'd like more information, you can um, see the link below. Um, on the website, you'll find all my contact information there. If you'd like to reach out and have any questions or want to collaborate, I encourage you to do so. And um, thank you so much.